Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCC Higher Revision video. There's 28 days to go, or four weeks exactly into your GCC Mavs exam, so keep up the hard work, you're doing really well. And today we're going to be focusing on the topic of inverse functions. So yesterday we looked at composite functions, and I said that today we were going to look at inverse functions, so today we're looking at inverse functions. Um, so it's important to know how to find inverse functions. I, in this video I'm going to go for inverse functions, I'm going to give you some questions to try yourself. And if you've got the quote Mavs revision cards, card number 33 is on inverse functions, that'll be a really useful one for you as well. So in this video, we're going to go for inverse functions, so let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at inverse functions. So yesterday we looked at composite functions, now today we're going to look at inverse functions. So in other words, that whenever you apply a function, you get f of x. What a function would you need to apply to go back to find x? So in other words, if you start off with x and you apply a function, so if you apply a function f, you get f of x. Then the inverse function would be the function that you apply to go back again. And we denote it with an f with a little minus 1 as the power. So this is, if you're given that a function of x is 8x minus 7, find the inverse function of x. So in other words, find what function you need to apply to go back to find x. So let's do that. So if I've got a function f of x, such as 8x minus 7, and I want to find the inverse function, what I do is I first of all let y equal 8x minus 7. So I replace the f of x with y. And what I'm going to do is at the minute y is a subject, I'm going to make x a subject. So I'm going to rearrange this and make x a subject. So if I want to make x a subject, the first thing I'd want to do is get rid of this minus 7. So I'm going to add 7 to the left-hand side and add 7 to the right-hand side. y plus 7 would be y plus 7. And then on the right-hand side, we would just be left with 8x because we're adding 7 to get rid of the minus 7. So we're just going to be left with 8x. Now, I want to make x a subject, so we don't want this multiply by 8. So we're going to divide the left-hand side by 8 and divide the right-hand side by 8. So on the left-hand side, we would have y plus 7 divided by 8 so it's going to be y plus 7 and then over 8 just over 8 and then equal to and then the right hand side we had 8 multiplied by x we're dividing by 8 to get rid of the multiply by 8 so we'll just be left with x so i've now made x a subject so that means that x is equal to y plus 7 divided by 8 so this is going to be our inverse function so we'll replace y with x and we'll make it our inverse function so our inverse function f minus 1 of x our inverse function would be equal to instead of y plus 7 we're going to write x plus 7 over 8 so x plus 7 divided by 8 and that's it and let's just check that if i let x equal 2 to begin with so let's say for instance x is equal to 2 if i apply a function f so if i apply this original function i would do 8 times 2 is equal to 16 take away 7 is equal to 9 so that will give us 9 and then if i apply the inverse function so if i take our 9 and do 9 plus 7 9 plus 7 is equal to 16 divided by 8 gives us 2 and that brings us back to what x was and that's it that's our inverse function and that's it. Okay, so let's have a look at one for you to try. So we've got that given that f of x is equal to x over 3, can you find the inverse function of x? So press pause now and find the inverse function of x. Okay, so to begin with, we let our original function equal y. So we're going to write y equals x over 3. At the minute, y is a subject, so we're going to rearrange it to make x a subject. So we're going to multiply both sides by 3 to get rid of the divide by 3. So multiply by 3 and multiply by 3. y times 3, that's going to be 3y. And that would be equal to where we had x divided by 3. We're multiplying by 3 to get rid of the divide by 3, so we'd just be left with x. Now, if we just turn this around, we get x equals 3y. So we've now made x a subject. So that means that this is going to be our inverse function of x, and we're just going to replace the y with x. So the inverse function of x would be equal to 3x. And that's it. So if our original function is x over 3, the inverse function would be 3x. And let's just check that. If, for instance, x was equal to 15, 15 divided by 3 is equal to 5. And then if I do 3 times 5, I get 15 again. And that's it. That's the inverse function of x. Okay, let's have a look at our next one. So we've been given that g of x is equal to 8x plus 5. Can you find the inverse function of g? So press pause now and find the inverse function. Okay, so we let y equal our function to begin with. So y equals 8x plus 5. At the minute, y is a subject. So let's rearrange this and make x a subject. So we're going to take away 5 from both sides. So we're going to take away 5 from the left-hand side and take away 5 from the right-hand side. So y minus 5, that's going to be y minus 5. And that's equal to, on the right-hand side, we had 8x plus 5. We're taking away the 5, so we're just left with 8x. Now, we want to make x a subject, so we don't want this multiply by 8. So let's divide by 8 and divide by 8. So on the left-hand side, we would have y minus 5 divided by 8. And on the right-hand side, we'd just be left with x. So if we made x a subject, now let's just turn this around. x equals y minus 5 divided by 8. So we've now got the x equals y minus 5 over 8. So our inverse function, so g minus 1 of x would be equal to, well, we're just going to use this, but replace the y with an x. So we'd have x minus 5 over 8. And that's it. That's our inverse function. And if you got that, well done. 
And let's just check that. If x, for instance, was equal to 2, 8 times 2 is 16, plus 5 would be 21. 21 take away 5 is 16, divided by 8 is 2, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at another question. Okay, this time we've been given that f of x is equal to 2x minus 1 over 7, and I want us to find the inverse function of x. So press pause now and find that. Okay, so let's start off by letting y equal to x minus 1 over 7. Now, the minute our y is a subject, let's rearrange and make x a subject. So this time we're going to multiply both sides by 7 to begin with. y times 7 will be 7y. And on our right-hand side, we'd just be left with 2x minus 1. We're not going to add 1 to both sides, so add 1 and add 1. So we then have 7y plus 1 is equal to 2x. And then finally, we're going to divide by 2. So divide by 2 and divide by 2. And we'd get 7y plus 1 over 2 is equal to x. Now, if we just turn that around, we're going to get that x equals 7y plus 1 over 2. So this is going to be our inverse function. We'll just replace the y with an x. So that means the inverse function of x would be equal to 7x plus 1 divided by 2. And let's just check that. If, for instance, x was equal to 25, we would have 2 times 25, which is 50. Take away 1, which is equal to 49, divided by 7 would be 7. So that means then 7 times 7 is equal to 49, plus 1 is 50, divided by 2 is 25. So that's it. That's our inverse function. Okay, let's have a look at another one. Okay, let's have a look at one last question. So this time we've been given that f of x is equal to 3x over 4 subtract 5. And we've been asked to find f minus 1 of 2. So feel free to press pause now and do that. So in terms of finding the inverse function, let's let y equal 3x minus 4, subtract 5. We want to make x a subject, so let's add 5 to both sides to begin with. So add 5 and add 5. On the left-hand side, we'd have y plus 5. And on the right-hand side, we'd have 3x over 4. Now we want to make x a subject, so we're now going to multiply both sides by 4. So we're going to multiply by 4 and multiply by 4. On the left-hand side, that would be 4y plus 20 is equal to 3x. And then just multiplying both of those by 4. And then multiplying the right-hand side by 4 just gets rid of the divide by 4. And then finally, we just need to divide by 3. So divide by 3 and divide by 3. So on the left-hand side, we'd have 4y plus 20 over 3. And that's equal to just x because we're dividing by 3 to get rid of the times of 3. So that means that x equals 4y plus 20 over 3. Now, we wanted to find f minus 1 of x. We wanted to find our inverse function. So now we just write this out, but we replace the y with an x. That's going to be 4x plus 20 over 3. And that's it. That's our inverse function. Now, we wanted to find what we get when we substitute 2 into the inverse function. So we're substituting 2 into the inverse function. So it's going to be 4 times 2 plus 20 all divided by 3. So we're just substituting 2 into the inverse function. So we're going to do 4 times 2. So 4 times 2 is 8 plus 20 will be 28 divided by 3. So that means that f minus 1 of 2 would be 28 thirds. So you could leave it as that, 28 thirds. Or you could write it as a mixed number if you wanted to. As a mixed number, that would be 9 and a third. And that's it. So that means that f minus 1 of 2 would be equal to 28 thirds or 9 and a third. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at how to find inverse functions. It's important you're able to do that. So hopefully you find this useful. Now, yesterday, whenever I talked about the practice questions, and I've got a link for them in the description below, I said it'd be useful to try them today rather than yesterday because there's a mixture of questions involving composite functions, inverse functions, and so on. So I highly recommend you try the practice questions today. If you need a recap on composite functions, go back and watch yesterday's video as well. So hopefully you find those practice questions useful. As I said, there's four weeks to go to GCC Maths exam, so keep up the hard work. You're going through these videos. That's the one step. That's fantastic. Also, make sure you're doing your five a days. Make sure you're working really hard in any lessons you might have left. And also just keep up your hard work doing past papers and just working really hard. And I'm sure that with all that hard work, it's going to pay off. You're going to do fantastically well. So I'll see you tomorrow for the next video. Cheers. Bye.